What's up, guys? Welcome back. Weather to the Storm podcast. Hurricane Shane Burgos, my man, John Ron. What's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, a backstory, uh, my background, how I got involved into this, uh, how I got to where I am. And uh, same thing for my brother here. Let's start with you. Um, so, my, my backstory is uh, pretty interesting, I think. Um, I, um, I didn't start out in a big gym like this. Um, I actually didn't start out as a gym owner at all. I was a uh, federal agent. I was employed by Homeland Security for about four and a half, five years. And um, I started a very small gym in my parents' garage, uh, really more for myself, um, just because my work days with the agency were, yeah. were really long. Um, and I've always loved working out. I always enjoyed working out. I was a college athlete. So the garage was kind of my escape from work. And when I first started the job, um, it was something that I, I, I liked. You know, it was cool to say I was a federal agent. I had nice, nice stuff, nice car. Uh, I was 24, 25 years old. It was pretty, pretty sweet. And then I just really, really wasn't loving it. And I wanted something different. Um, so I ended up coming home from work one day and I had a little opportunity to go to one of the local gyms that was in our town in Monroe, New York. And um, I was working out and as I was leaving, I saw this young kid with his dad and um, the dad had no clue like how to train his son. So and it, it was you, it was clear as day, you could see it was, it was kind of weird. So I just went up to him and I gave him a couple pointers. Um, and the kid was a little badass looking kid though. He was like uh, very small with a, with a blonde mohawk. He just like looked like a roughneck, he looked like a fighter. And um, <clears throat> you know, I kind of just gravitated toward him. I told him a couple pointers and, and then I just went on my way. And um, like a week later, I went out to uh, the barber local barber and it just so happened to be his dad, his dad. and um, we were talking and he said you know my son's a, a local wrestler he's very good he's young he's like a seventh grader and um, they're bringing him up to the varsity team at our in our local school district which has a very good team and um, he was just like can you help him out like he's, he's small he's like 79 pounds and he needs to weigh 99 to make the weight class so I was like I can help him you know but I, I work long hours and um, you know, I, w I wouldn't be home a lot, but I'll do whatever I can. So we started working together. I had met this kid. He was like 12 at the time and, um, like super, super motivated. I asked him like what his goals were and he like looks me dead in the eye and he, he rattled Seven off three. like, yeah, he rattled <laughs> off like six things like, and they were all like, I want to be the best. I want to be a champion. So right off the bat, I was like, this kid's different. I, I definitely want to help him. And, um, we started working together and I would come home from work, you know, working long days. And, um, I started to really not love being a federal agent and being in law enforcement anymore, and I would I really looked forward to coming home and working with him. You were training him in your parents' garage. I started tra I started training him in, in the local gym, yeah. and then I started building up my parents' garage gym. Gotcha. Um, but I actually ended up working out with him in his own basement because his mom was like, "Hey, you know, do you want to see the the wrestling room?" And I was like, "What the fuck is a wrestling room?" So I go down their basement, and they literally have the whole room is wrestling mats. Yep. And then there's trophies and medals and newspaper clippings. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Like I was like, Jesus, it's like a shrine to your kids. <laughs> um, but it was very like, you know, it was an intense atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wasn't used to that. Like I was a basketball player. They wouldn't have wrestling rooms. So we, I saw that he had a squat rack in there and he had some dumbbells. And I was like, let's just work out here. I thought that was a better environment for him. And, um, and then we just built this awesome relationship. and. Once we started to grow out of his basement, that's when my, my garage really came to become a thing. And um, it was just me and him. I loved it. I, you know, I'd get home from work and it was like, you know, I got to go train Vincent. And during my work hours, I would, I would research. I would research what's the best way to train a wrestler, what's the best way to train younger, younger athletes. I read so much um, off of different websites and um, like had different mentors that I either reached out to or just like really, you know, did my due diligence to learn the proper way to train athletes and pretty much just taught myself and had my own back experience from being an athlete. So the garage got started and, and he started to kick ass and got a lot of great results and really, you know, proved himself on the mat and we got him up to the weight class he needed to. He became, yeah, he became a, co a top wrestler for the varsity program. And, um, before I knew it, I had like six or seven kids contacting me to train because he, he became such a bigger name and you know, it, it was, uh, it was special. It was cool. And then when he hit high school, he was doing great. And 
he was going into like the later rounds of the um, state championships uh, for wrestling, and he came off the mat one time and he was really coughing weird and breathing heavy, and I was like, something was wrong with him. I knew something was wrong because okay. was this? he was a sophomore, and um, I knew something was wrong with him because I knew how good a shape he was in. You know, like as hard as we train for a young guy, he was training hard. Um, and he was eating right, and, and wrestling in itself is a very hard sport to do it anyway. 100%. So he came off the mat, and we were, you know, I was worried, his mom was worried, his coaches were worried. So she, his mom took him to the doctor, and they found out that he had cancer. Um, he had a, a Hodgkin's lymphoma, and um, my world got turned upside down, and I really didn't, I thought he was gonna die, you know, once you hear, yeah. you know, he's 14 at the time. At yeah. that point, you, you've been with him for... I've been with him for a couple of years now. Yeah. So like, I didn't even look at him as like a client. Like you know, he was like my little brother. Yeah. I did everything for anything and everything I could for him. And I, and I was never a burden. You know, like I yeah. always wanted to do... I always wanted to do things for him. I always wanted to be around him. Yeah. And um, when I heard that, I, I still remember being in my car like crying because I just knew... I, I thought he was definitely going to die. Um, so I, I just went right down to um, Westchester Medical where he was. And I tried to stay as many nights as I could with him in his hospital bed. And, uh, you know, I brought him boxes of food and, and just did everything I could. And I still remember, you know, him going in for one of his big scans. And I was the only one in the room with him. I've never seen the kid cry. He was super tough, like hard, hard as nails. And, um, like, he was going into the big x-ray machines, you know, like the, the CAT scan looking yeah. thing. And I just saw a tear go roll down his, the side of his face. And I, that just, like, killed me. Yeah. And then when he came out... You know, I just told him, you just got to believe you can beat it. And like, that's really kind of how like the believe thing was really formed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, I always tell people a 14 year old kid basically pushed me to go after what I wanted to do and, and go for my goals. Your dreams, yeah. yeah. And he, uh, thank God he beat cancer, um, went on to be, be a very, very, um, respected Big time respected name in, in New York State wrestling, and now he's a full scholarship Division One wrestler at Hofstra University. And I was just at his house last night. I, I see him as much as I can. I, I still love him to death. You know, we had this little motto, this little mantra that we would say. It was, uh, "How strong are you? Too strong." Was always the an answer. So anytime I have like something going on or there's like issues that I got to deal with, I just you know I always revert back to that too strong thing. Um, and I always will, because I mean, I'm 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 blessed enough to say like I get to go to work every day, and, and I own my own business, and I get to train great athletes and great people, and I don't even call it work, you know. I love it, yeah. yeah. And and I've been on the other side of it where I didn't love it, so I'm beyond grateful for what I have and you know what's what's coming. But I also know that you got to keep that that outwork everyone mentality and and understand what that really means, you know. Yep. So, so you went basically from your parents' garage, that was phase one. Yep. And you had a smaller gym, right? Phase two. Small gym. How yep. many square feet was that one? That, that, was small. that was almost as small as my parents' garage. I think that was maybe 50 more feet than my parents' yeah. garage. Yeah. And now you went to the I got, over there, which yep. was what? 12, about 1,200 square feet. And now we're finally in here. And what now, do we got? Now this is 2,400 square feet. Yep. So, but Phase four. Is yeah, the next I got, so. yep, but I will say this, and, and I know he's probably got something similar to say with this too. There's something to be said about just seeing it, you know, like visualizing and just really believing that you could get to that phase. And I, I still remember being in my garage and, and eventually seeing, a, a, you know, a storefront and then a bigger storefront. And every time I, I get to something, I've seen it before I step in it. So I don't know, call it weird, call it what you want, but I, that's how I am. I'm, I'm very visual and I just, I always embrace that because yeah, no, it's no. it's awesome I and mean, i never really was like that until i started working with you and that's been a huge i feel like that, that little missing chink in my arm or that uh that i've added and i feel uh unbeatable now it's so, awesome man i'm yeah, happy so. for that great freaking story awesome story honestly thank you man i don't know how to follow that up but i guess i'll try to follow it up my backstory thank you basically <laughs> basically i started uh started watching mma when i was in eighth grade, I think uh, I saw the Ultimate Fighter 2 is what I started with. That's when I really got hooked. But I saw an Ultimate uh, a UFC Unleashed episode, and it was uh, Matt Hughes versus Carlos Newton. I told this story about a million times. See Matt Hughes in a triangle choke. I didn't know what it was at the time. I just saw the guy wrap his legs around his head. Matt Hughes picks him up, puts him on the cage, and then slams him down, knocks him out, and he wins the fight. And I'm like, he wins the world title. And I'm like, you could just 
slam people on their heads and at night he used to work. So I'm like, what is this? I'm like, this is crazy. So uh, literally that episode led into the premiere of Ultimate Fighter season two. So I started watching that and instantly just hooked, hooked. Did not miss another Ultimate Fighter season episode ever to this day. And um, started binge watching all the UFC Unleashed episodes. And um, me and a couple of my friends found a, a, a local Tiger Shulman's gym. It's like, oh, they have kickboxing and they have jiu-jitsu. I'm like, oh, Tiger Shulman's, I thought that was like a karate school. It's like, yeah, but they said they have like a one month trial, it's a hundred bucks, you can do, um, you can do grappling classes, you can do kickboxing classes. I'm like, oh, let's try it out. So cool. I go there, me and my three friends, uh, two, two other friends, there's three of us. And uh, for that first month, I did not miss one class. There's classes six days a week. I showed up every single day. And then at the end of that month trial, I, uh, my parents, we couldn't afford it. I was like 15 at the time. I was in ninth, at the end of ninth grade. We just couldn't afford it. All right. It's, it was good training. It was legit training. It's not going to be cheap, right? Um, it was worth every dime. Um, just couldn't afford it. So my sensei at the time offered me, um, I could help clean for a discount. So at the end of the night, after I was on training, I'd clean the mats, I'd uh, clean the bathrooms, I'd scrub, I'd do a bunch of odd end jobs, right? And it was worth it because it led me to where I'm now. And uh, that, I, it was hard. It was hard going to training and after training. I mean, I'm in school all day. After I'm in school, I gotta go train after training. I gotta clean the school. Clean the school. So it was hard, but uh, I wouldn't change it for a thing. But um, one one year into my training, literally one year, I, I find out that uh, I have scoliosis, right? So this is actually before I started training. I found out scoliosis is about a 20 degree curve in my back. Which scoliosis is a curvature of your spine. So I find that out. It's about 24 degrees. And um, they're like, all right, don't worry, we'll just monitor it. And I'm just like, all right, cool. So I go back uh, six months later and like it goes from 24 to like 30. They're like, all right, it's moving. We just gotta keep monitoring it. And then from like another six months, we'll go from like 30 to like 49 degrees, which my, my spine, it's a question mark. So now it's at the point where it's like, ah, uh, it's too late to put like the, the they, they put the, what do you call it on? The brace, the brace yeah. on you. We have to wear it. We're in class, you probably see some kids doing that. It was just far gone, too far gone. And it was, it was progressing at a rapid at a rapid rate. I was hitting my growth spurt while I was growing. My spine was curving at the same time. So I was past the point of that. So basically the only option I had was to, I mean, I had two options. I could have just let it go and eventually I would have grew like this, Yeah. right? Or I could have got the surgery, two metal rods in my back, a couple of $15,000 worth of screws. So that was basically the only option that made sense, especially for me at the time where I, I want to keep training. I don't want to be stuck like this when I'm 20 years old. So I get the surgery at 16 years old, a couple days after my 16th birthday. And it was, to this day, the, probably the hardest thing I've had to go through. I remember waking up after, uh, after the surgery, literally right after I wake up and I'm looking around in a pitch black room and I knock out right away. Then I wake up and my mom and my, my, my brothers are there and I knock back up. Then I wake up and then nobody's there. And then I go back, I, I just kept coming in and out for like, it felt like forever. I was like, what is going on? And that was just because of the meds? Yeah, the medication. I would wake up, look around, see people, then knock out. I wake up and nobody's there, just in an empty hospital room. I'm like freaking out, but I only have like three seconds to freak out because I pass back out. <laughs> so I'm like, this is crazy. And then um, when I finally come to and I'm, and I'm fine, um, I cannot move. I'm like, physically paralyzed. It felt like I couldn't, any little tiny movements were hurting so bad that I felt like it wasn't worth it to move. So I was literally stuck in bed like this. Couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. By the end of the week, they actually, get, I, I didn't eat. I lost about 15 pounds. I ate a bite of bread the entire, I was in the hospital for five days. I ate a bite of bread the entire time and bit on ice chips. That's all I ate for, for five days. Um, yeah. Just lost a bunch of weight. I was already skinny at the time. I was about 130 pounds. I left there like 115 pounds. I was in 10th grade, 115 pounds. Yeah, yeah so it was, just, it was bad. Um, they had to teach me how to walk again. I had to do a little physical therapy there. Finally got out, get me home. One week goes by and I'm feeling better. I can walk now, but I can't even bathe myself. Like, my mom needs to help me shower myself because I'm stuck like this. I'm walking like a grandpa. Mom's helping me like, scrub my back. I have to wear like, a bathing suit because this is like, I'm like, my mom is giving me a bath right now. I'm 16 years old getting a bath my mom. It was, it was crazy. I'm just sitting there like looking at myself like, Obviously, at the lowest point in my life, I'm thinking like, I, I, there's only no, there's nowhere to go but up from here. This is this is terrible. Another week goes by, so it's two weeks post training, and I'm feeling significantly better. And just two weeks from the training, I'm oh, sorry, two two weeks from the from the surgery, I'm feeling immensely better. Three weeks go by, I'm walking normally. I start jumping on the trampoline like an idiot. My doctor tells me, don't do anything for three months until I see you. Don't do anything for three months. Like, oh, yeah, all right, you're 16, kid. You're, you're, you're stupid at that age. Jumping on the trampoline. Another week goes by. I'm doing crazy flips on the trampoline now. I'm riding, I'm skateboarding, I'm riding bike. I'm doing everything that a normal 16 year old kid does. I'm like, four weeks, I'm like, I feel, I feel good. Right before, I'd say right at three months, before, before I see the doctor, I go back to training. 
And I'm like, oh, I felt good. I, I got like, my first class, I'm like, great. I felt great, I'm back, that's it, I'm back. Three months, I'm like, oh man, I was, three months ago, I was, I was in the worst place of my life. I was like, I thought this was gonna be terrible. Here I am, three months, and I'm back. I take my second class and <laughs> I'm grappling with one of my, one of my um, training partners. He, we're, we're doing jujitsu and uh, he folds me in half basically, brings my knees over my head and my, my from, the, from the base of my neck all the way down to my tailbone, every vertebrae, I just feel <sighs> And I'm like, I'm like I, should, I yell, like, get off of me. He gets off, he's like, you're right? I'm like, I don't know, I think so. I'm laying down, I go to sit up, I go, what the hell is that? Every time I would straighten my spine out, it would crack from the top of my neck to the bottom. I was like, ugh. Instantly my heart just dropped, I'm like, I know, I just know I, I, I fucked up. Like, I, I, I shouldn't have been here, I shouldn't have been training. So I go back to the doctor, we schedule an appointment right away to go back and see him. And he's just, I just, I see his face. He's just disappointed. Like I told you, and you didn't listen. I'm like, I know, like I, I fucked up, and I'm starting to tear because I know I don't want him to say what I think he's gonna say. And he's yeah. like, he, and then we do X-rays, and he's like, well, the bad news is your your spine it didn't fuse, it, it moved since the surgery. And it's probably because you went back to training. But I mean, I'm like, it's definitely that. That's definitely why I went back. He's like, so there's another option. Give you one more month. Don't do anything for this month, and. um We'll come back. We'll, we'll do more X-rays. See if your spine is, is if your spine is in the exact same spot, then it's fused. You're good. If not, then that means we got to do surgery again. And at this point, I'm just tears coming down my face. I'm like, because I don't want to go back to that. That was terrifying, man. Yeah. I, that was the worst. Again, never want to experience that or again. So um, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing anything for a month. So I literally did nothing for a month. Played video games and just chilled. I was like, let me just chill. Went back to him, and he's like, all right, spine is fused. Two more months, and you can go back to light training. Prior to this, before I even got the surgery, he's telling me that I'm probably not gonna be able to train ever again. Yeah. And now I'm like, I can go back to training. I'm like, all right, cool. Cause I wasn't gonna take that as an answer anyway. He knew that I literally just found training. Yeah. I was in love with it for my first class and there was no shot that I was gonna stop right there. So he kind of got that vibe. So ever since then, it's been history. Like I used to be, I, I was never really a team sports kind of player. Like I didn't, I didn't play baseball. I'm not even really watch any, any, any team sports, any regular sports. I just watched combat sports, but um, I, was on, I was on the diving team back in eighth, ninth, and 10th grade. And in 10th grade was when I, I just got back from my surgery. And I was like, I, just, I don't want to do diving, man. I should go back to training. I want to go back to training. I want to go back to training. Yeah. So I purposely got kind of like kicked off slash kicked, uh, quit the team yeah. just so I can go back to training. Yeah. And uh, got kind of the same team, been doing the same thing ever since, man. So that's a little bit of my backstory right there. That's crazy, dude. Yep. When they, when the doctor said like, don't, because he said at one point you wouldn't be able to train, right? Yeah, when I went for the consult for the, before I got the surgery, he was like, oh, you're doing what? Like, MMA, what, what, what is that? No, especially this is, years ago. this is 13 years ago. Yeah. It was it was smaller than what it, was, what it is now, obviously. So he didn't really know what it was. And I show him, he's like, uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to do that after this. And I was like, I'm crying. And I'm thinking like, what? I just found something I, I, I love. I never felt passion for something for yeah. I'm 15 years old. You don't really find a passion, right? No. So I found it. Like, I'm not letting this go. You're crazy. I'm, you tell me I'm not gonna do this? Okay, whatever you say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I I think that what's cool is like the the few things that we kind of can cross stories with is one. I mean, how grateful you are for like the support, you know, networks. Because I I don't know how you got away with doing all that shit. And your mom was oh, like, yeah. "What the fuck yeah, are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> she was she was working some of the days too when she wasn't taking care of me. But yeah, she was <laughs> doing what you were doing back. Yeah, yeah, man. You six years old. Yeah. You can only Jeff control Lee. a sixteen year old so much. And she couldn't catch me to stop me. So yeah. <laughs> But like you said though too, like the passion thing, and I mean, obviously you still have it now, and, and I have it, and you know, it's it's cool when you have two passions combined now, because yeah. that's what a team is. Yep. You know, you yep. bring that that team mentality together, where it's individuals that come together for, you know, like we want to get you to the top. Yeah. You know, so I think the backstories are what what you look back on. You're like, I if you you've, you've gone through so much already, and yeah. you've had. Or for myself, like I was blessed to have something spur my passion up again, you know. Yep. So I, I think you just be grateful for what we have. But, Sometimes um, it's crazy. So it, it, it is. Sometimes I like. I remember I was asking one of my friends, like, what, what, what's something I should talk about on the podcast? And one of them was like, oh, you should definitely talk about the scoliosis thing. I'm like, oh, I'm like, duh. I, was like, I didn't even think about that because I don't, I don't even. It's not something that I look at like, oh, I look back. Before. That was cool that I overcome that. It's just the hand that it was dealt, and this is what I did to get over it. I don't, I don't give myself credit for it. I don't really yeah. even think about it. It's something that happened 13 years ago, and it's really kind of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. A little bit. Like my back is still, my back is good. Obviously, I got a little bit problems here and there with with some things, but um, I don't think of it as something that uh, 
that I went through. I think it's it's gone. It's done. This is where I'm at now. So it, I guess it's good to sit back sometimes and look. Oh, I did kind of overcome something. The guy told me I was never going to train, and I'm I'm ranked in the top 15 in the world right now. Yeah. So no, it's pretty 100%. cool. To say. I think it's awesome that you can look back and say that. But I also think that your your friends and people that were you know telling you to talk about it know that you can influence a lot of people, a lot of younger kids that might be going through that and look at where you are. Yeah, you know? it's, it's all mentality, man. It really yeah. is all mentality. If, you, if you're sitting in there just sulking and, and, and what was me, that, that mentality is not gonna, no. not gonna get you anywhere. It's, it's, the hand, it's the hand I was dealt. I sucked it up and I did what I could do and I'm, I'm where I'm at. And if I can do it, I'm nobody special. Like I always say that I, I, I was never this type of person that has that, that mentality where I wanna outwork everyone. Like, I remember running the mile in freaking high school. I used to freaking walk it because I hate it. I was like, I don't want to run, man. Cardio sucks. I don't want to do this. I was not that type of person. So I, if I can become that kind of person, then why can't anyone else? Yeah. Honestly, no, that just right. that doesn't, doesn't have to go for being a fighter or it could be, it could be anything. Yeah, anything. I so. totally agree. I definitely agree. Yep. So you weathered the storm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of our podcast today. Thank you guys for checking out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys uh, click subscribe, give us a like. Uh, let us know what else you want us to, want us to talk about. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram at Hurricane Shane underscore, uh, Twitter at Hurricane Shane B. Believe Elite Training on Instagram. I think it's JR Trained Beat on Twitter. I don't even know my social media. Instagram. <laughs> You'll find Instagram. it. You'll find it. All right, guys, thank you. Until next time. Later.